until we're raining. And we set up side fireproof door company. I think all these companies should work. Whatever that top for Hector Nero and Morphe are accurate. It looks nice. Not Russian. German. It's all the Russian quarter where we live in. And we're Russian. We're Eastern European. So we're not exactly Russian or whatever that means. Eastern European. So, um. Look at that. Um, legal Marine, whatever that was all about. Yeah, I was talking about uh, this car factory place here. Multi factors where they have its cyclonic flats and new and used tyres, batteries charged, motor oil, and transmission oil. And obviously it's all closed up, but I would like to think that it's in, let's imagine that it's running. There's a side entrance there. Obviously, it would maybe do more business to a, out uh, via other motor companies and that, and a small amount of trade um, to the general public, because they don't actually have any, um, bays to service cars themselves so they supply people that do service the cars and other taxi companies and people like that so I imagine an initial starting um, point where they would be supplying batteries and tyres and whatever to Roman's taxis and occasional parts to the spray bay um, which you could also imagine has a larger element to it because the spray bay not only sprays your car it fixes your bonnets panels your tires your wheels your engine if your engine's smoking you're driving there it takes three hours and you come up with a brand new engine new color job new spray job on it all your windows are fixed everything so they do everything in that garage but it's a bit ridiculous just having that lump of time in uh doing it all in three hours and even if you had a you know a big dint in your bonnet would take on in three hours, I suppose. And they wouldn't be able to get on with it straight away. Most garages can't. You have to book it in and they will schedule it for a time. They've only got so many engineers and they'll be working on certain jobs. And other customers have promises of their cars being delivered at certain times as well. So you can't just walk in off the street any time you like and get it redone. Unless you're the boss and, you know, you can jump the queue. Maybe if you do a load of jobs. For them. Um, they might do a fifth, like Roman Yeah, well, exactly. And like, let you have free paint No, not free paint I'm saying, for instance, Roman buys his own paint, right? For and his, his, commu his uh, connections he has with the spray bay people, who are different owners, they will prioritise looking after his cabs and respraying them and doing the bodywork. You know, if you take a cab out and it's, um, and you damage it, or any of the other drivers damage your car then they would be able to come in there's always one spare car sat there isn't there well that's in case of crashes I think that's a wise move but also from some business methods they say that isn't a wise move because you could always switch cars to a different ma uh, make of car temporarily if you've got already um, planned jobs on and the um, the car that you pick them up in, as long as it's a good clean car and it's in road worthy condition, it doesn't matter to the people. So if you've got regular airport runs that you do, you do them in your own car, obviously if, if you haven't got any spare cars, then any other car would do that's licensed to be a taxi. And the point being is though that they have always got this extra car in here that's been worked on by this mechanic. So somebody comes in and he's just damaged his car, maybe he's just had a, a rear end shunt and have broke his lights. Let's imagine that he pulls his car up, <coughs> switches car for the good one, right, and goes in the office and records it down that he's now changed from cab 9 to cab 15, and yeah, he's just driving too, they always do, he gets out and goes to the clock on, look. Um, and uh, 
we would also need areas, maybe street parking, where these drivers who come up in, who turn up in their own cars, can, uh, you know, switch over cars. And of course, you've also got people who turn up for the shift and the other cab isn't back yet because he might have gone on an airport run and be delayed in traffic. So although he's due back at six, the next guy's due to come on his shift at six, so they're supposed to change over, right? And they're supposed to both meet here at six o'clock and he's supposed to leave his car. Um, but this is why you need one or two extra cars. So if he had one extra car, that car's kept serviced and as another car drives in that gives the mechanic time because the guy switches to another cab and the cab that he was driving if it needs an oil change he, he checks the service miles see what it needs doing to it fills it with fuel right and everything else and this is one of the points about having a garage here is that there's no no petrol store and one of the missions I had written about um, wound up I was uh, just talking about this type of mission is where in the garages on the other side of Roman's garage there was uh, there was some other garages and a storeroom and can you see that there's like um, toolboxes and stuff stood on the back wall like the sexy, sexy in business you have the city environmental health come round occasionally um, and sometimes anonymously and without warning they come round and they check out your business. Now imagine you see that green um, cabinet that stood against the wall. If it was a little taller it could look like a door and you could use that, swing it out to go inside, knock a hole in the wall. This is the like a mission that they design and what happens is Roman keeps all of his illegal fuel in this building next door and he oh also God, uses it for his parts store. I mean you could just literally have a door in there or he doesn't even need the door it's just a key there to a separate room it's just like a, le a lock up at the side you know one of the other things that Nico could do is he could um, rent this lock up himself you know and it's part of Bellic Enterprises and he could use it for it's tall enough to take his, um, you know, money trucks in and stuff like that and hard things so that we can break into them because they've got a safe in them and take a long while to break into. So rather than just blowing it up in the street, if you exploded a money truck in the street, you'd destroy all the money. In fact, it would still probably stay in the safe inside the truck and you wouldn't be able to get to it. So it's pointless and it's a ridiculous thing. So let's have it more realistic. You steal a money truck, the first thing to do is to um, pull it up onto the back of a, a big rig right and sheet it over so that they can't see what's under the big rig right once you've hidden the truck then you've got to get it back to a place like this right and then you could maybe have to call the fire brigade at two points to block off the street say there's you know some sort of a house fire so that you could get the truck off the wagon and load it into there unless you had a big warehouse where you could um, drive the big rig in and then set to work on the money truck and probably the guys that are locked inside of it. Um, anyway, these garages at the side are suggested that Roman rents them all in different people's names, like usually in his, in his, in his employees' names. So he gives jobs to other Eastern Europeans who come off the boat and haven't got nothing to do. Um, they can't get a job. This corner garage here is ideal for motorbikes and stuff like that because it's only, it's not a proper rectangular shape. And um, I have got a map that I drew on the post of all these garages. And let's say that on one of these garages, probably this one which is right here in the corner, he, uh, these are also for Roman's cars himself, so his own personal cars. So if me and Roman turned up and was going to do some car jobs, we would pull around the corner and select which garage we want to park our nice car in. But Romans maybe stored loads of illegal fuel, stolen fuel, which he gets off one of the fuel cartels. And it's full of drums. And every week, or maybe twice a week, they deliver drums of fuel on a night time at 2 o'clock in the morning. And one of our jobs is to make sure that 
um, the police don't catch the police don't catch us delivering the fuel. So when the truck arrives, <coughs> me and my cronies, me and my mates, have got to keep watch in the street both sides. And the idea is that the um, the van pulls down into the air or even backs into that storage area there and we've knocked a hole through the wall anyway so you have a doorway knocked through from that shed the from the garage into that lockup and you would roll your barrels into there after the trucks backed into your um, so these are all ideas you can play with or the, the truck can just pull up outside and unload the barrels it's illegal fuel and the, the truck could just back into there and it would just be something like one of them Boxville vans or um, you know some low loading van because drums of fuel are, are really heavy and the drums are like this size here look I think they are called 50 gallon drums somebody will probably correct me on that but they look like 50 gallon drums to me and um, obviously it's what they put the champs build the fire in to keep warm and that and um, yes those are some of the jobs that you would have looking after Roman's business so one of the jobs is um, you would get yourself a truck and we're going to go off and get a truck and we'll come back in the next video and we'll show what you can do for Roman's garage <laughs>